Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. His name is Bricky. And 40K, am I right? But before we get into that, if you enjoyed today's episode and you maybe want to support the podcast, head over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to the Discord, uh, bloopers if they happen. The $15 tier gets you access to all of our posters in crispy HD digital format. And yeah, it's a good time. Patreon.com slash adeptus ridiculous bricky tell them about books and merch and whatever else you want to tell them about oh all that good stuff uh you know you're gonna read lion son of the forest when you get the chance but also check out orchidate.com because it is still december and that means you still have time to snag all of the fantastic posters of 2023 before they are gone mm. not to mention the mat as well as all the new just a little blood stuff you can check it all out at orchidate.com it's on the front page you'll see all the christmas stuff you'll see the last chance for the posters grab it while you can and enjoy 15% off your order if you spend over 100 bucks. Mm. Hell yeah. Mm -mm -mm. And that merch is good. As a connoisseur of our merch and as a purchaser of our merch, guarantee. I uh, I must admit, I uh, I still don't know why you buy it. I will literally just send it to you. I do not understand. Well, I didn't know that. I've told you this on multiple occasions. I have maybe forgotten then, but whatever. DK is so tired of dealing with me for these episodes <laughs> that he won't even message me <laughs> off podcast in for order to merch. get free merch. <laughs> what can I say? I, you know, you're really a no. No, I'm just kidding. I will maybe probably take advantage of that in the future then. Good. Anyway. Good. So what, what, are, we, what are we doing today? Uh, so this one is going to be uh, another one of those episodes where we kind of just shoot the shit a little bit. Hey. Um, it's a little bit more relaxed. It's not a particularly uh, hardcore topic. We're not talking about like Lehman Rust or anything like that. It's not like a major Primark episode. Um, but of course, I still need to hit you with a quote because it's funny. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Fine. The elite who rule over the worlds of the Imperium, obsessed with power and the politics to maintain that power. They may rule from piles of fur on a barren plain or from the crystalline windows at the top of a hive spire, but all know the precarious nature of power and the ever-present enemies ready to snatch it from them. Quoted um, by the Inquisition. I mean this this just sounds like the uh the the nobility or the upper crust of a hive city. What kind of crust? Pizza time. Uh stuffed crust. Stuffed with what? Uh mozzarella and maybe a little garlic and some pepperoni. Okay, so we're having like a calzone. Yeah, but only in the crust. You know, like a like a like a stuffed crust pizza where you roll up the crust and you stuff it with like you know. So so a, a, a crusted calzone pizza. Yeah. Can can it's, a calzone's crust also be stuffed? Sure, why not? So so then so then you have like a calzone that's filled with toppings, but then the crust of the calzone is also stuffed. Is rolled with toppings. into a crust that also has toppings in it. Yeah. At that point, is that just not like a double decker pizza? This sure. is not getting cut out, Shy. Hey, this is important. This is important 40K lore, I think. And do you know why it's important? Because who else would be so, like, garish, so gluttonous <laughs> to create a double stuffed, stuffed calzone pizza than the highborn nobility of Warhammer? You're correct, DK. We're Let's talking about go! nobles. I did it. You did it. Then see, so there's a segue now, so we have to keep it in. I have a break. Oh, that's right. It's a segue. She can't cut it. Let's go. Yeah. So uh, the thinking. highborns. So I was thinking, okay, uh, you know, we just did the little Tau vehicles, kind of a fun one. Mm -hmm. You know, carry off the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking, okay, Rogue Trader just came out. Sure and did. we've done a video on Rogue Trader already. So what to do instead? And I was like, well, you know what? There's a large amount of this discussion in 
the nobility, the highborns, the planetary governors, the, mm-hmm. all those kinds of people in Rogue Trader. Okay. Not to mention, and, and we just talked about the Bad Ab War, where that has a lot of corrupt um, planetary governors and stuff like that. Sure, also very true. And also to go along with that, you just had you know a, a large majority of Rogue Trader opens with you meeting someone, not talking to you in the proper decorum, and being like, Abelard, crush his balls. <laughs> It's true. Yep. You you have the choice whether or not to be like, oh, it's okay. You didn't know I was a rogue trader or just like, I will shoot you in the leg now. Learn your place. Pretty much. And uh, and so, you know, naturally it makes sense because you do speak with a lot of the highborn in 40k in the game. Um, as you go through the game, you will talk to more planetary governors and the like. And so it might be nice to talk about a position which I would argue is one of the best jobs and one of the few plate times where you actually might want to live in the 41st millennium. Oh yeah. Being a planetary governor for sure. Cause you have so much freedom to do whatever you want that essentially, as long as you're sending in the ties that you're supposed to send in. And as long as you're not doing anything too heretical, they basically just leave you alone. Right. Uh, for the most part, yeah. Now, I mean, freedom is maybe a bit too uh, large of a word. I'd argue the only truly free people in uh, the Imperium are rogue traders themselves. That's um, true, because, yeah, yeah. But even then, uh, you know, because you're, you know, obviously you're still, I guess it depends. Like, you're if you're the planetary governor of, like, an aggro world, that's one thing. If you're the planetary governor of... I don't know, like Nostromo from back when, like that's not particularly great. <laughs> no, that's true. It does definitely depend on the planet. I guess being the planetary governor of a death world is probably not a whole lot of fun. I, I do truly wonder what the planetary governor of Katachin is like. Like, like what, how does he do that? <laughs> probably doesn't exist. That is uh, ruled by the people. Probably just like, I bet they have like orc logic. It's just the biggest Australian there. Yeah, the biggest dude with the biggest knife yeah, and the highest kill count. Uh, so, anywho, uh, there are a couple types of nobility. This isn't just planetary governors. This is the, the general highborn elite of Warhammer. And there's a couple types we can talk about. Um, there are the noble houses. There are the imperial houses. Uh, The planetary governors themselves, the imperial commanders, which kind of go hand in hand, and then just the highborn elite as we know it. Um, A lot of the pictures of the highborn elite are pretty hilarious. Not hilarious. They're (laughs) like old school John Blanche. Oh, like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like old school, uh, I almost want to say Victorian, like paintings, very... You know, with the big wigs and the the, the big overblown uh, clothing and everything. Yeah, like the, the the John Blanche is a very particular art style. Uh, the the two ones sandwiched between the Rogue Trader image that Shy posted are examples of that. Ah, yes, um, yes, yes. Okay. Ba- I mean, it's basically the art style that made Warhammer. Uh, yeah. It's just been adjusted to becoming a lot more of a grungy, dirty, grim, dark version of it now. Sure. Um, yeah. But ironically, the two pictures that are posted there are probably pretty accurate (laughs) to what they would look like (laughs) with that level of just crap on them. Yeah, I whenever I think of a planetary governor now, I think of that first one that Chai posted where he's just got that big fur coat. He's very big himself. His clothing is just lavish and all over the place. That's like... Whenever someone says planetary governor, that's like the first picture that pops in my mind now. I think of like this kind of guy too, just this, yeah. re- just this really big, opulent kind of character. Yeah, definitely. What was the name of um? What was it in uh? Oh crap! It was in Day of Ascension where one of the Admech guys it. was. <laughs> what? Or no, no. Why did I think you were talking about a game? The day before that awful oh, um, like scam yeah, game that, that came, came out. out. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. The the genes to their cult book we read. Right, right, um, right, right, right. You know, we they had the highborn fabricator general, I think, which was known as they looked like a bell. Oh, that's right. He was shaped like a bell and he walked on the little claw. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like that guy. <laughs> that guy's shaped like a bell too. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. Shaped like a pear. Uh, but um so anywho, uh 
highborn elite. Well, I guess we'll start with planetary governor because it's basically the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, a planetary governor is the governor of the planet. He is the ruler of the planet itself. Uh, and it's where a governor would govern a state over here in uh, America, for example, mm-hmm. he is the governor of the entire planet. Hence the um, name. <laughs> his name. Hence the name. Planetary governor. Uh, they are also considered an imperial commander of military matters. Uh, the title itself is a little bit synonymous. For example, I imagine if we were on Katachin, uh, this is this might be wrong because maybe Katachin has their own thing, but I would guess that they would refer to the planetary governor as the imperial commander instead of the planetary governor, despite both titles being the same. Oh, okay. Mainly the okay. reason for that is because like much like the president of the United States, he's also like the commander in chief of the military, I suppose. Oh, uh, okay. So, kinda, so yeah, right, right. Gotcha. Depending yeah. on the situation and whatever, you might call him something different. Sure. Right. So in this particular, like a, a fortress world would maybe someone would refer to them as the Imperial commander, despite planetary governor also being the totally normal title. Right. Right. Gotcha. The now, CNC. The planetary governor itself may govern their world specifically, but depending on how they've expanded, might also govern sectors or subsectors or or even as things as far as uh, solar systems. You might have, I don't know, um, Dick Buttocus Prime in the Dick Buttocus (laughs) system, uh, but he also might, uh, in a sense, because he governs Dick Buttocus Prime, there might be a planetary governor for Dick Buttius, uh, Dick Buttius Secundus and Dick Buttius Tertius, but in reality, he's kind of the head honcho of the Dick Buttius system, you know? Could you could you say Dick Buttius or Dick Butticus one more time? Uh, like, are, are you sure you, you hit your quota of oh, saying this, that? Oh, this is me, uh, Pee Pee Poo Poo, third generation of the Dick Buttocus <laughs> system in the Segmentum Solar. <laughs> well done. Hail the well Emperor. Done. Hail the Emperor. All praise him. Um, all right, all right. <laughs> now, <laughs> of course, a planetary governor is, at the end of the day, completely bound to Terra. Oh, Their job, at the end of the day, is while they might see themselves as a uh, independent ruler, then they often don't really get bugged by people. They're they still servants of the Imperium. They are servants of the Imperium, and more particularly, servants of Adeptus Terra. Yeah. Uh, as far as thing, and especially considering how fickle and weird the warp is, it's pretty hard <laughs> to communicate to Terra for things like reinforcements. Yeah. So that's why you're also the Imperial Commander, because you need to maintain your own uh, planetary defense force or PDF in case there are ever any issues. Because there's a good chance you might get a little Jukari raid kind of searching for some folks or maybe yeah. the Voton kind of wants some minerals and it's good to or have a few defenses. Chaos just pops up out of nowhere for no reason at all because it's chaos and it's the warp and who knows and yeah you're not always going to be able to uh, contact Terra so you kind of got to be able to act a little bit individually and on your own if it, yeah. the, the need arises yeah. You also often have to put down sometimes chaos cults. I mean, hell, that's a major point in the Rogue Trader game is often the lower decks will sometimes just have a chaos cult there. And you're like, well, crap, got to deal with them. (laughs) Got to go deal with the chaos cult. Yep. Yep. And you are traveling through the warp, so it's going to happen. I'd say that the best description of this whole thing is is this little uh, mini paragraph on the Wikipedia, which is. As long as the planet's imperial taxes are paid, its mutant and psyker populations kept under control, and they the requisite tithes of psychers and astromilitarm regiments are delivered to the Imperium, and the planet is governed completely, the governor is free to run the planet however they choose. Yeah. That that is that is about how I how I view um the planetary governors as long as you're sending in the ties that you need to and as long as you're not letting anything crazy happen do what you want yep do what you want rule as you want be as greedy and re- and gluttonous as you feel like so long as you give them guard keep some shit under wraps you're yep, good as long as you pay your taxes as long as you don't piss off the feds you are perfectly <laughs> fine yep yep N- now, of course, a lot of the times planetary governors are 
the the weird thing about them is that despite the fact that they consider themselves to be all powerful, like like planetary governors are assholes ninety five percent of the time. Yeah, I'm trying to think of when we've heard of a planetary governor that was like just and cared about their people and wasn't just kind of out to make themselves as rich and opulent and just blowhardy as possible. <laughs> blowhard is like it's such a boomer word, but I actually really love it. So thanks, buddy. It's such a great word, blow. You're such a blowhard. Blow, like blowhard. Oh, such a good word. Um. For the most part, I mean, because obviously how you view the planetary governor is generally in the guise of how Warhammer is told as a satirical piece of fiction. Um, In this case, you know, a a big portion of 40K is just how excessively large the Imperium has become Mm -hmm. that it's just completely ungovernable. Become Which is, ungovernable. Become as soon ungovernable. as you said that, I saw a giant duck in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta post the duck. <laughs> you have to. Shy, put it in the episode too, the, the ungovernable duck. So it's it is a requirement. <laughs> it's can't. unfortunate because I actually don't know how far back this image is. You, oh my you know you know what's ironic about this? I, I as we're talking about this, I, I forgot found it. I forgot that the uh, sweatshirt that I'm currently wearing. It's of a Japanese wrestling group, and their name is literally Los Ingobernables. Wait. The, Inge- the Ingovernables. Wait, you said it's a Japanese wrestling group? Yeah, well, it's, uh, they're, they're kind of like Japanese and like lucha wrestlers, and the okay. name of their group is Los Ingobernables de Japón. So, the, the Ungovernables. The Ungovernables of Japan, yeah. That's pretty funny, actually. That, that's a that's a great cultural combo. I I I I compl- until until we until I'd seen the duck, I forgot <laughs> that I was even wearing it. L I J. Um, but yes. Yeah, so uh, it's obviously part of the satire is that it's so overly bloated and impossible to properly govern, combined with the difficulties with the warp, combined with the excessive religious uh, undertones, and then mix that with a little bit of oh, by the way, you're not allowed to have AI, and Microsoft Excel doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> it just means it's such a it's a it's ridiculous in how it's it's governed, but particularly the planetary governors are the are pushing the highest uh, reaches of being completely out of touch with regular people. Oh, of course. Like, I mean, to, as, to as the next any, degree. As any higher up, like, governor sort of uh, nobility, they, yeah, they're completely out of touch with the common man, the common person, what they need, what they want, what they like, what they dislike. Yeah, that's that, that does not surprise me one little bit. I shy, shy says I picked this guy as my character rogue <laughs> trader because it's canonically correct. That that guy is a blowhard. I I that guy I love the wig and everything. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Um, I I, I, I picked the uh, I picked the young Astra Militarum guy that looks like he's Patrick Bateman. I I picked the hooded psyker with both of the uh, the eye things. You know, I thought you were gonna pick um. Uh, this is not because of your ethnicity in case it sounded like I was going to say that. Uh, I thought you were going to pick the 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 um, uh, Asian road trader guy with the powdered wig and the cane sword. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I don't like the powdered wig. Uh, OK, because I, I thought the cane sword and like otherwise I, yeah. I might have. I might have. But yeah, I, I, I hate the, the old Victorian like powder wig thing. I just uh. don't like it. This is like my second favorite portrait of this guy. I, I thought I thought you would love the cane sword and, and like the long robes. I do. Robes. I do love the cane sword and the long robes, but the wig just doesn't. Oh. I, just, I don't like. I also don't like that one of the augments isn't like replacing the eye with like the red uh, circle thing. Yeah, I'm kind of shocked that there's no red circle. It's in like half there. of the it's portraits. Like all of them have it. Yeah. Yeah. That was a little like, strange. You, you it. Yeah. Anyway, my my personal favorite. Uh, portrait is the lady with all the servitor skulls around her and the horns. Oh yeah, that one's really dope. That one's really, really good. sick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, planetary governors. Uh, yes. Anyway, so um, th- you know, obviously, Warhammer is a is a British uh product. And <gasps> what? No. Is, okay, hold on. I'm I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> shush. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Bail Abelard, <laughs> smack him Crush all silly like. <laughs> 
Santa. Phil is talking with Cole. Oh. Uh, but uh, so there's. I always remember a particular clip of um. Who's the current king of uh, of, of Britain? With after uh, the queen died, King, king Richard Charles the blah, or whatever. Blah, blah. I don't know. Whatever his it's, name. It's some um, Richard, I think. I don't know. It, he has this like clip of him signing a document and then like pushing the document away and then like f- like pushing it harder and be like eh, like like get this away from me you you damn low low level people because mm. oh, he's it's like King ni- Charles the Third apparently okay. I was wrong you were wrong eh, leave it to America to not know British stuff it's fine I I could care less we fought a way to not we, I three hundred years ago my ancestors died to make sure I don't have to give a shit about the royal family. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's like there's this level of like, OK, he's been in this nobility for so long, generations upon generations that just the general issue issues of regular people are so far removed. Oh, yeah, except yeah. take that <clears throat> to like times 15 <laughs> that plant some planetary governors have ruled over their system like their family has ruled over their planet for like thousands of years, actually oh. thousands of years. The, 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 the Von Valencius line has ruled <laughs> over this planet for actual millennia. Mm-hmm. Damn, so it that's doesn't, crazy. That's a crazy lineage of just, it's been in the family for millennia. And Shai makes a, a good point. This also is a, a literal and figuratively, far removed thing you live in a hive city you genuinely live at the top of the spire because when you think oh. about it th- these families are are hundreds and hundreds of people of nobilities and, and thousands of slaves and servitors but hive cities are so big it's like having 15 new york cities of highborns on just the top wow and you, I imagine you, you would want to keep them as far. Well, if you're if you're of the mindset of a usual planetary governor, you're probably like, I'm so far above them. I shouldn't have to live with the the rabble and the filth down below. I should be up here where, you know, I am safe and protected from those who are jealous of my power. It, it's a combination of the the humorous satire that 40K loves and the also in your face obviousness of it where like Shai oh, yeah, says yeah. You are literally above the peasants, like physically literally you are and above figuratively. Them. Yeah, yeah. So it's it adds a lot uh, a lot to it, and like yeah, like you you take a shit and it falls on the peasants genuinely. Aw, poor peasants. And then so you know you'll have the far top, the the imperial command uh, commander slash planetary governors spires, which are their homes. I mean, we, we've seen we've seen the rogue traders quarters in the game. It's like lavish. It's insane. Can you imagine the view from the top of that spire? Sheesh. I feel like if you. Oh, God. Yeah. On your, I mean, I wonder if you could. Crazy enough. I wonder if you could even see the peasants and the rabble. Because oh, you're yeah. so high up, <laughs> the so clouds high. probably cover them. Yeah. You probably just look down. It's just clouds. All you see is white, fluffy clouds. I don't, ah, I don't everything is them. great. I can't see any of it. Have you have you done the side quest with Abelard figuring out what to do with the um with the lower decks? I have not. I basically okay. I'm I'm just as far as like I did the intro and I went to that one planet that's being kind of uh there's like a rebel incursion that they're Oh, Rikard Minoris. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's uh, without two spoilers for everyone. Um I love Abelard. He's like my favorite character. Um, mm-hmm. but he's cause he's got this, this like small part where someone's like rogue trader, well, you got to help us with the, the lower decks. The Seneschal is being a problem. And you're like, Avalar, what's up? What's going on? And he's like, well, the lower decks found a chaos cultist amulet. And that's kind of weird. So I like requisition, requisition and enforcer force to go down, and, like kill all of them. <laughs> and it's like, we got, I, and, and I made sure you never had to know because it's my job to keep you, uh, uh focus on your duties. And I handle the bad stuff. What a Chad. And what, like, a, what a guy what a guy and you know this is this is the seneschal of a rogue trader which is basically the seneschal of a, of a planetary governor but yeah i would honestly argue that this is a a lighter version of what happens in the nobility mm. 
Because he's it's, a nice guy that's trying to do right, whereas usually maybe the Seneschal is what, like, uh, kind of like a Jafar. Like, you you don't speak to the low level people if you are one of lineage. Like, like oh, you just wow. don't interact with them. Okay. If you're a teacher, like, okay, you're you're a you're a son of a noble. And to think about like the noble lineage, how far down it goes. Like you're not there's not the planetary governor. You might not even be the planetary governor's seneschal's son. You might be the son of the aide of the seneschal of the planetary governor. Wow. And <laughs> your math teacher most likely comes from the fifth generation of prestigious math teachers of the <laughs> highest uh, ranking class of your hive city. So your math teacher is also, in a sense, a noble, just oh. not as noble as you are. Like, well, all right, yeah, okay. The only people you ever interact with that are not of noble blood are the 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 heretics and um and prisoners <laughs> that have been reprogrammed into servitors. Oof. Yeesh. Like you All are, right. you are so far removed. You you don't even <laughs> see the people you govern. You don't even look at them. Sheesh. You give that's... orders, and that's it. Okay. I mean, hey, that's that is the life of a planetary governor that lives atop of a spire. So yeah, I mean that that fits with the idea of the hoity-toity nobility that thinks they're better than you. Because in this system, well, they are. They are better than you. They are. Um, and that actually does lead into what kind of happens to a lot of these kids because pretty often, <laughs> yeah, that's right, Shy. I was going to say that. Uh, have you recruited the navigator yet? I haven't. She, see, like, it's not, it's not really much of a spoiler. The, the Navis Nobilite house sh are not allowed to speak the, uh, to the, the lady navigator because she, because Navis Nobilite navigators are also nobles. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So they just cut the tongues out of all of her servants, so she they can never speak to her. Oh oh, oh wow! All right, okay, uh, yeah, so, sure, sure. That's she, yeesh. That's a great part where she complains about like the ship being too loud. It's like, how do you deal with this when everyone still has their tongues? And one of your answers is like, you know, I probably should cut the tongues out of everyone here on the <laughs> ship. <laughs> but it would take a lot say, of logistics. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, if one of the options was genuinely, oh, yeah, I will go cut everyone's tongues out. I oof. It's. I, would, I, think I that wouldn't put it past a 40K game to do that. It is one of the options. Like, there's, there's, a, there's a small moment where, like, I think she chastises a crewmate, and he goes to his uh, bunk and shoots his family and kills himself. Wow. And it's just like, and, and then your answer is like, well, he should have been stronger then. It's like, good Jeez. God, man. Uh, well, I mean, hey, it, this is the grim dark of the 40th millennium, right? So it's great. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's great. What a fun time we're having. Oh, boy. <laughs> Terrors so, beyond human imagination. So interestingly enough, they have not lost the idea of younger folk being born into the highborn power. Mm -hmm. And genuinely acting out because of it, uh, you know, when you think of like a dynasty, like like a genuine current dynasty, uh, like the long lined house in the UK or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, whatever, like a, like a Russian oligarch, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. They're often being born to that level of wealth means you're just going to be spending your life completely idle, covered in excess, like excess Ex Ooh, uh, expected to have definitely Slanesh. Yeah. Um, expected to be constant in like like insane. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the the having like like expect expectations, hey. insane expectations put on you, and ridiculous family infighting, espionage, and political uh, debauchery. Ah, uh, so so just billionaire children in general. Basically, just billionaire children don't don't uh, know the value of a dollar. Everything is expected of them. Yeah, that will never simul interact with people lower than them. Mm -hmm. So naturally, this can become issues there, especially <laughs> yeah. among like you know because the we all people always ask like, do people in Warhammer have like lots of sex because of just how much war there is and stuff? And I'm like, brother, that's the <laughs> one thing that we are in a have no shortage of 
When, yeah. when you live at the bottom of a hive city, the only thing you have are drugs and banging. It's like living in the Inland Empire. Oh, <laughs> I, I went to school in the Inland Empire, and yeah, not too terribly far from the truth. It's you, you have the only two things you can do is meth and 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 fuck. Oof. So <laughs> often, you know, especially when you're a highborn who probably has multiple concubines and can do whatever you want, he, uh, you probably will have dozens of children, which means there are dozens of heirs to power. Mm-hmm. So between the infighting uh, amongst your peers and all that kind of stuff and the relative idleness. What do you do? Some will just try to climb the social ladder. Some mm-hmm. will go hard into politics. And some just totally reject their family. Um, oh. Some that just completely reject their family will be will join the guard. Oh, just wow, to, really? Just to get away. Just to goddamn leave. Is that like kids that are kind of like, even though they've been like pampered and born into wealth, it's like they still have some sense of like rationale and they're like, no, this is all terrible. This is all wrong. I want to actually help people and I want to join the guard because my family's so corrupt and awful type of thing. Pretty much, if I'm not mistaken, in the Bloodlines book, there was the situation where the um, the girl... Uh, of the, oh, of the, the rich right, lady right. was out doing a bunch of drugs, and that's kind of how the story started. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. right. That's true. Uh, again, in Rogue Trader, your spy guy is like, I'm number 11 in line for ruling spot of my noble house, and I don't want 20 people behind me to get through me as they climb on top, so I bailed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, like, similarly, when people want to get away from a, a life of complete lavishness, they sometimes seek the entire opposite. They, they go, jo- they run to the military where, yeah. where they can't be hounded anymore, or they might run to the Navy, Navis Imperialis. Um, yeah. And also, sometimes even worse, they might uh, cut complete ties and become pirates, criminals. <laughs> They might, they might steal as much wealth from their family as they can and then leave and go sailing the stars somewhere away from their family. Based? Based? Yeah, you know? Based? Life, pi- pirate's life for me. After stealing from the corrupt. Although that probably doesn't look great for the uh, planetary governor's family if their child becomes a rogue pirate. It looks extremely terrible, but it's also yeah. one of their maybe like 30 kids, so. That's true. Can't win so- them all. Can't win them all. Like it's it's reached to such a level. And, and you know, if you're born of high nobility, because the high nobility is to such a high degree. We talked about people having their tongues pulled out already, but like, yeah, it's speak to me in the right decorum or I will kill you. And it's like <laughs> and my dad has a lawyer and you can't do anything about it, you know? Yeah. The one thing it's, I remember from Rogue Trader was like, I, I don't remember. It was like at the very beginning and like you go up to some guy and ask him for information and he's like, well, I don't know if I should tell you this information and you're like, but I'm a rogue trader. And you, he tells you the information. And then the next line is like, now I'm going to shoot you for giving up the information too easily. And it's <laughs> yeah, like, wait the, a minute. The, wait the a guardsman. minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. I remember that the guardsman, you could be like, like, this is what, this is what happens when you have loose tongues and you just kill him. <laughs> you kill him. And it's like, Jesus, he helped us. Why would you do it? Someone, there's someone else. I think it was like in a prison planet. It, it, yeah, it's a prison planet. And then the three three cultists tried to kill you. And then so three prisoners killed the cultists. And they were like, uh, h- "Hello, your loyalty. Uh, we're not with those weirdos. We're prisoners. Yeah, but we're not part of this whole thing. Um, we just saved your life. Can we go?" And my first response was on the bottom. It was dogmatic. It's like consider your request denied. Die. <laughs> and then you just kill all of them. <laughs> you picked that, didn't you? I so did. You so did. It's mm, 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 mm. anyway. Anyway, it's it's very lovely um, to see that like that level of power is is to the extreme, and yeah. it becomes a pretty uh, large amount of opulence, which does lead to problems uh, between <laughs> yeah. the political infighting, the fact that a lot of planetary governors got their position by killing someone above their rank and the never ending assassination coup attempts, et cetera, that they have to deal with. There is also the feds. Ah, the Imperium. And 
The issue that comes with having such opulence is you can slowly, often over the course of hundreds and thousands of years, slide into debauchery in many different ways. Yes, you can, especially in 40K. There are an infinite number of ways to just slide down that pole. And that's one of the things that ends up happening is you might go into wanting even more money. So you might start doing what happened in the Eisenhorn book, start selling some Xenos artifacts, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which for a rogue trader isn't much of an issue. But for a planetary planetary governor, governor, that's a big no, no, that's a no, no. Um, You might, for example, uh, get a chaos cult that just can can't be stomped out. And it takes you way too long in this really long war. And so then the Imperium is like, you are very obviously unfit for rule. You are going to be executed and someone new will take your place. Uh, There is like, so when, when that happens, when they're like, Oh, Hey, you've, you've fallen too far from grace as planetary governor. Uh, We are going to execute you. And someone new is going to take your place. Did they do that to the whole family or do they just take the next person in the lineage? Depends on how rotten they think the family is. Oh, okay. Oh, so they look at the whole family, the whole like hierarchy. So they might replace all of them. So very often, whenever the need for a planetary governor to be replaced happens, one, they, they always die. Uh, oh, sure. And two, the decision is often made by an inquisitor. Ah. Um, and if the inquisition makes their particular decisions and statements, they're the ones who choose these things. And because they're the ones who choose, uh, ah. it depends on the type of inquisitor you're dealing with and how bad they screwed up. Yeah, I was going to say it depend, depends on the inquisitor and it depends on the severity of the crime. Right. So gotcha. that is a big, uh, a big question when it comes to that type of thing. And of course, most often than not, I'd say a planetary governor falls under the throes of Slanesh more than any other uh, <laughs> chaos god. Uh, no in fact, kidding. Really? They would fall to the chaos god of excess? The there planetary is, governors? There is a planetary governor who do, does exactly that in Rogue Trader. Um, oh. And you got to deal it with it. me? Oh. No, well, you're not a planetary governor. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. I'm, I'm a rogue trader. Can I follow this, Lanesh? Yeah. I, I did pick me a few heretical options at the beginning of uh, Rogue Trader, so. Oh, did you, did you try to accept the power from, uh, I sure from did. the ghost? Oh, I sure, sure did. I, I ran through the fire. And all of the <laughs> and all of the people behind me burned to a crisp. Ooh, you don't like the human barbecue. That's good, buddy. Uh, Shy says, "I'm gonna bet by the most part, Inquisitors will prefer to kill everyone and pick another noble family that has ties to the Inquisitor to take over because Inquisitors often come from noble families as well. Ah. So, sometimes, yeah, sometimes it, it, it depends because Inquisitors are made from the skull of Progenium." Uh, yeah. which is orphans of whatever, whether it's governors or guardsmen or imperial commanders. Um, so, anywho, uh, obviously, if you're not putting down your rights properly, if you're not making your tithes, this is often an issue that a lot of governors fly into is that they become so opulent, so over the top, is that they spend all their money making their lives better, and then they do the um, Mary Antoinette strategy uh, and then uh, where they spend all of their money on them and the people get nothing and they fail their tithes or the people rise up. And next thing you know, oopsie, there's a guillotine. Yep. Have your cake and eat it, too. I mean, except the cake in this sense is like <laughs> God knows what. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. We get so, it. We get it. Actually, interestingly enough, one of the more difficult things that happen for a planetary governor, especially, is when an inquisitor decides to show up. Um, Ah. This is mainly because the planetary governor, as far as they know, outside of the emperor and the, the feds on Terra, are the most important person ever. Oh, yeah. If you're a planetary governor and you know an inquisitor is coming, it's like, oh, boy, all hands on deck. Like, we need to wine and dine the inquisitor because, like, they are, you know, 
VIP. Yeah, they they are number one. Yeah. And so whenever the an inquisitor arrives, how they decide to deal with the governor might be kind of interesting because while the governor has to do everything you say, you're still on their planet. And like it's not unheard of for an inquisitor to go searching on it uh, for issues on a um planetary governor's planet and then just not show up again. Mm-hmm. Most inquisitors are too good for that, but sometimes they might just flat out be killed. Oh. Uh now not often, but like, you know, maybe the inquisitor is making some assumptions that the they don't like or they are hiding something. Oh. And so they just disappear. I mean, commissars in Catachin often disappear. Disappear. Which is always That's funny. <laughs> they just, oh, where'd they go? So, where'd they go? for example, an Inquisitor arrived. You're a planetary governor, DK. Oh, boy. A, I an have inquisitor, power. An Inquisitor takes notice of your planet. Uh-oh. Whatever reason. You don't know why. Or, or, or maybe you do know why. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, they take a notice. Okay. They arrive on the planet and they come straight to you. Like, instantly to you. Okay. This is already unheard of because nobody oh. just comes straight to you. Oh, okay. So, so I'm already on high alert because nobody would, without reason, nobody comes right to me tippy top. They always go like to one of the underlings first. They always go to someone lower on the chain. They'll deal with it. But if they're coming right to me, there is some serious going down. How, how dare anybody go straight to you? Yeah, you, how, like, dare. how dare they? How dare they? Even an inqui- How dare you, sir? So they arrive to talk to you. Now they they might go with your customs and decorum. You know that they, they they might they might be like I I, I request an audience with the imperial uh, the planetary governor. Uh, if we can schedule a time sometime next week, we can meet uh, and discuss a few matters uh, of importance. Says inquisitorial representative, uh, whatever name, mm-hmm. uh, you know, brick brick von brick. <laughs> and then and you might say brick like von brick was the best you could come up with. I was going quick. <laughs> <laughs> what's your imperial what's your planetary governor name dk uh you get 10 seconds i did this one in 10 seconds uh, d von k obviously i so knew it like, i knew like you, you couldn't think of anything better you <laughs> shit lord shut up shut up i wasn't expecting you to turn it back on me you son of a ah! all right so planetary governor metal pipes uh, so, so, uh, Brick Von Brick uh, requests the audience. So, so you uh, might either, y- a couple of your things might happen. You might treat me as like a peer and be like, oh, we'll discuss over wine. I would or, do that actually. That's probably what I would do. Yeah. Yeah. Like a little wine and, dis- and talk in your, in yeah. your, in your office. Yeah. Uh, you might be like, oh my God, it's Brick Von Brick, the inquisitor. Um, <laughs> I haven't done anything wrong. But why is an Inquisitor want to talk to me? Right. Oh, no. I I would definitely go with the first one. And well, unless I knew for sure that, like, you know, I was up to some shady dealings on my planet. Right. So if you were terrified, because being terrified of Inquisitor is just a good practice to have. True, true. But it depends, like, are you terrified of me because you're scared of the Inquisitor, or are you terrified of me because you have something to hide? Exactly, yeah, that's the, ooh, the double, well, I guess that's not the double-sided sword, but yeah, I, I, I got you. So maybe instead you throw, you throw a banquet. You take like ooh. a table, like, like, a, like a 20-foot table, and we sit on the, on the two sides of it, and there's a <laughs> feast of your best possible food, and you provide to me your most beautiful women, and, and all uh. these things for, for a night, you know, like, Everything an awful, awful High Lord person might do. Sure. Um, <laughs> My concubines. Or I, Brick Von Brick Inquisitor, want to kind of flex my power a little bit. And I, and I arrive to the system and I'm like, I'm meeting with the planetary governor in an hour. Have him ready. Oh. And this, this might be a tactic to put you on edge because I think you have something to hide. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm going to make you nervous. Oh, ah, okay. But I'm not nervous. I got nothing to hide. We're sure, sure. So instead you're pissed. 
Because how, because you're the most important person of all time. How dare I speak to you like this? How dare you schedule my time, my important time? How dare you, Brick Von Brick? How dare you, Inquisitor, not go through the proper decorum and manners in order to speak to a planetary governor? We have procedures for this. How dare you, Brick Von Brick? How dare you? Oh, oh, oh. I have been scorned. I have been besmirched by Brick Von Brick. And so, you know, the governor's ego is like t- taller than his damn spire. So <laughs> he might take this particularly be pissed off, is it? Mm-hmm. But because of this, you know, it might end up having you get mad and maybe be a little revealing. Ah, okay. It's all just tactics to 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 see what cards are in my hand. Or I might approach you as an equal, a peer, appropriate ceremony, hold court, speak mm-hmm. to you as as a kind soul back and forth. I we're working together. I've heard rumors of a problematic cult on your planet. I'm not blaming you. Devon K. I'm just, but we need to work together to crush this. Devon. While simultaneously, I'm very much like, I'm gonna find out who's fucking behind this. If it's you, I swear to God. I swear to God, I swear. I wonder how many Inquisitors do that though. I feel like most Inquisitors would just try to immediately get the reaction by just like, you're gonna meet me in an hour. Bah! So it depends on the Inquisitor. Uh, course, let's let's course. take the Eisenhorn book. <coughs> Eisenhorn, Eisenhorn would go through the proper channels and decorum, right? Yeah, because Eisenhorn is James Bond. He's a suave guy, and despite yeah, the fact yeah, that he yeah, can yeah. never smile again, he's a <laughs> literally, you know, yeah. he's he's a smooth talking guy. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in the opening of the book, he spoke to the that one planet generally kindly, despite how mad they were. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, who was the name of the other Inquisitor in that book? The older grouchy man. Oh shoot. Um, didn't it start with like an M, like a Musk? I don't. I don't want to say Musk, but like Maul. <laughs> Inquisitor Musk. <laughs> he, he he makes the worst social media site of all time in the Inquisitor, and then sends a sends his car to space. I don't know why, but I was thinking of the smell, like musky. I wasn't thinking of the person. <laughs> You know, if Elon Musk was in 40K, he would be one of the least egregious imperial governors out there. And he's still a total prick. Yeah, you're probably right. But yeah, I I, I remember who you're talking about. The other sort of. Right. So in the book, he specifically announced his arrival loudly. And was and so like everyone Inquisitor Musk has arrived. (laughs) Yeah. And because of that, everyone was like, oh, my God. And so it made everyone freak out. Yeah. And that was his tactic. Yeah. But he didn't get anything from that because they were kind of like ready for that. And they didn't really give him all the information. And he couldn't find all the information. He needed Eisenhorn. So that's not always the way to go. That was the the general part of the book is that Eisenhorn had the better touch for the situation. Despite both touches being fine, depending. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes Inquisitors look like that, too. Whoa, Inquisitors have power armor? Oh, yeah, they have. They, they totally could have power armor, and, and like, that's frightening. Oh, my God, I, I did not realize Inquisitors could just don power armor and be like, yes, I'm here to investigate you. It's like, would you like a glass of wine to that guy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Shy is also correct in saying this here, too. Um if it's an Ordo Hereticus Inquisitor with a retinue of 20 Adeptus Sororitas with flamethrowers <laughs> telling you you will meet in your office in 15 minutes, it's probably a good time, time to, to get run off world. away. Yeah, time yeah. to get off world quick. It's time to flee. Yeah, time to go. Um, Admech also, of course, have planetary governors, but they're called um, the Fabricator Generals. Mm-hmm. They're much more related to tithes because, of course, of course for Forge course. Worlds and the like. Yeah. Um, but... Like, for example, here's a fun one. This is a planetary governor named Nesh. They were a planetary governor of the world of Ionis, who foolishly led a plan to have the world secede from the Imperium. An Eversor assassin broke into the governor's palace to kill him, but instead found a bomb and was killed in the explosion. Secretly, Anesh and his co-conspirators observed the explosion from orbit, gloating at the spoils, when immediately one of his co-conspirators transformed out of their callous assassin form and immediately murdered him. Wow. They're, All uh, right, if I'm then. Not, if I'm not mistaken, the planetary governor of Armageddon, Harman von Strab, 
is like half the reason why Armageddon was such a total cluster. Damn. Is because of his complete ineptitude. <laughs> Isn't that always the case in 40K? Everything's worse because someone's just dumb. Pretty much. Yeah. So, you know, then there were like, these also extend to other worlds. Um, if you remember in Assassin's Norm Kingmaker, the planetary governor was a uh, high uh, Lord Yavarnius Cow mm-hmm. of the Strider Rao, uh, you know, groups. Yeah. yeah. So because of that, uh, he himself was, uh, what's the word? Um, like, it's not necessarily a planetary governor, but it's their version. It's a Night World's version yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Night World version of the upper crust nobility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, for the most part, depending on how an Inquisitor uh, adjusts with the time uh, with the planetary governor or how many other aspects of Imperial authority might take it over, for example, a, a contingent of space marines might be like, we, we are suspecting a Xenos attack. Prepare your PDF force immediately. Uh, we are taking command of this engagement. And then, of course, a lot of a lot of governors might be like, how dare you? And then they die immediately because the space marine shoots them in the face. <laughs> how, da- how dare you speak back to a space marine, bro? Like, just do what they say. Like, ah, what are you doing? 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 So. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's really what I got for planetary governors and nobles. It's okay. like I said, okay. it was generally more of like a just. How does the upper crust live? Okay, very opulently, very hoity-toity, very up-their-own-ass type of, you know, kind of what you expect from, like, a fictionalized nobility in a sci-fi world. Just is very, uh, you know, as far removed from the uh, normal peasantry, normal civilians as you could possibly be. Uh, For the most part, yeah. Uh, yeah. and, and at that point, uh, not to mention that they would they live for hundreds of years. Yeah, because it's, of, a, it's a like you said, it's a millennia long reign. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it can be it can be insane how high up they can become and how long they can keep their position. Many yeah. of the time, planetary governors, despite us talking about them either being murdered or having to deal with the chaos cult, they might just straight up like just live an insanely lavish life and die of natural causes yeah yeah you thought but, seats of congress were bad sheesh but obviously that's less fun to talk about <laughs> yeah way less fun. So, so it's a lot more than fun to, and it's it's not interesting we mm-hmm. learn about the planetary governor that seceded from the Imperium, went straight to Slanesh, and then was immediately blown open from the inside out by a keeper of secrets <laughs> uh, when they were uh, fought by space marines. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Fun! Yay! 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 Slanesh! Ooh, that tall glass of Slanoosh. Oh, yes. Mm. Uh, Shy, is there anything you'd like to add before we, uh, we wrap up this nice, uh, relatively chill episode? This was a chill, fun episode. I lo- I, I enjoyed our time today. This was so, sometimes. This was good... Oh oh, go. Hey, you want to read this? Go ahead. And all of this because of the heresy. Before heresy, Emperor planned to have central official government, but because Imperium was so screwed up, they fallen back to self governance of the worlds, uh, an old system of arist- aristocracy as the most functional system. Oh, so if there was no Horus heresy, there would have been just a centralized government for all of the planets and there would be no planetary government or governors. So, as much as we hate the emperor and as awful as he is as a, as a person, mm-hmm. his idea for the Imperium is still light years better than what we have. Yeah, it's That's still fair. genuinely insane levels. That was um, one of the so. heresy issues. Emperor wanted to have civilian government where space marines had no power. Wow. Yeah. And that then could some not of the have space been marines <laughs> yeah, weren't stoked gonna... with that. Yeah. That is not how it ended up. Nope. 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 So, anywho. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, that's that's the general nobility. It's nice to talk about things that people would ask about. Yeah. Like like for example, a lot of times people will ask like, "Well, what's it what's it like 
serving in like the guard. And you'll say, well, Awful. you know, you hear about, <laughs> well, you hear about like the 40 million dead people in an engagement type stuff. But, yeah. but for the most part, it's not really like that. It's a lot more like regular military service. Mm -hmm. Normally you're putting down rebellions <laughs> and things like that. But then sometimes you might deploy against the Tyranids and then good Get luck. Eaten. And yep. then, oh boy, human soup. Human soup. So this is what are you how doing the highborns. This is how the <laughs> well, you know. Or you know what? I was going to say this is how the highborns work. But you know what? Why are you buying clothes at the, soup, the soup store? Soup store. <laughs>